The movie begins in the vast red Australian desert, a quiet place with no signs of life. Suddenly, an unidentified object launches down from the sky with a fiery trail, and the crash lands in the eerily quiet land. The following morning, a handyman called Bill heads out to repair a damaged phone tower. Jumping out of his vehicle, Bill walks over to the tower and is surprised when he finds a small dog wandering around, quite a distance from the nearby town. While he pets the animal, his eyes catch sight of something strange on the ground. Taking a closer look, he realizes that it was a dead rat wrapped up in a weird substance. Curious, he reaches out to touch the reddish substance and suddenly feels a sharp pain throughout his body. While he is struggling with the agony, a worm-like creature swims beneath his skin, making its way to his brain. Meanwhile, in the nearby town, a young boy named Simon is roused from his sleep by peculiar sounds emanating outside his window. Unable to wake his mother, he seeks out his aunt, Joanne, and eagerly shares his eerie discovery. Stirring from her bed, Joanne promptly dials her colleague, Luke, seeking an update on the cell phone tower's repairs. Once she can reach him, Luke explains that Bill had gone to fix the tower, but he hasn't received any updates since. While Joanna tells Luke that she will check the tower on her way to work, the signals fail, and the two are disconnected. Sighing in frustration, Joanne hangs up the phone and communicates with her sister, Samantha, that the movers were coming on Saturday, expressing how excited she was to move to the city. Heading out of the house, Joanne begins her drive to the cell tower and finds it in ruins when she arrives. Going inside the fenced area, she sees a local technician concentrating on filling out a report. Curious, Joanne asks the man about any potential storms that may have happened throughout the night, but the man dismisses the idea, telling her that they would have heard a storm of such magnitude. He continues to explain that the extent of the damage appears to be intentionally caused, and says that the replacement would take a day to acquire. Annoyed by the inconvenience, Joanna drives into town to gather information from the locals about any unusual events that occurred the previous night. Going to a nearby cafe, Joanne speaks with the owner, but is unable to get any valuable information. In the busy kitchen of the cafe, Chef Anthony hears his dog whimpering outside and goes to investigate. A few seconds later, a disturbing popping noise is heard before Anthony is seen aimlessly walking down the street. Joanne and the cafe owner see the man's strange behavior and call out to Anthony, but he remains oblivious to their calls. Finding the situation strange, Joanne starts making her way toward her car and a chilling sight of blood on the ground makes her stop. Following the blood trail, she discovers Antony's dog killed and mutilated near the fence located beside the cafe. Some type of strange substance was protruding out of the animal's body. Realizing that something strange must be going on, Joanne walks back to her car and notices teenagers hanging out on the balcony of an old building. Looking up at them, she asks them if they have noticed any weird incidents regarding what happened to Anthony's pet. Although they explained that they didn't know anything about the animal, they told her that their dog had been showing unusual behavior throughout the morning. Telling them to reach out to her if they remember anything else, Joanne resumes her walk. A few minutes after Joanne leaves, the teenagers begin to notice disheveled-looking strangers staring up at them, making them feel very unsettled. A few minutes later, Joanne arrives at the clinic and quickly tells Luke about a mutilated animal she had found. Asking him to investigate the cause of death, Joanne heads to another room and attempts to contact Bill through the radio, but receives nothing but silence from the other end. Meanwhile, in a different part of town, Samantha is working at the library and notices her son and his friends staring out the window. Going over to them, she sneaks a peek outside and is shocked when she sees Bill staring back at them, completely motionless. Concerned, Samantha opens the door and calls out to him to see if he is okay, but he refuses to respond, frightening Samantha into retreating into the building and locking the door. Back at the station, Joanne and Luke receive a visitor from the local geologist with a very interest in photography called Angela. Seeming excited, she tells them that she has something interesting to show them and drives Joanne out to the desert, revealing a massive crater formed in the rocky ground. She tells Joanne that the crater had just appeared overnight and explains that something massive must have crushed into it. Joanne listens to Angela's theory about an object falling from the sky with skepticism but advises Angela to secure the area and conduct further research. While heading to the car, the two women come across another dead animal, with the same spiky protrusions coming out of it. Seeing that the two cases were related, 
Joanne instructed Angela to collect a sample of the animal for future analysis. Meanwhile, at the school, Samantha keeps a close eye on Bill and the children, frightened by Bill's strange act. Suddenly, she remembers that one of her students had gone out to the bathroom and is concerned for the children's safety. While attempting to check on the man, Samantha notices that Bill has disappeared. With her anxiety growing, Samantha gathers the children and leads them to a different room on the campus. Instructing the children to lock the door, Samantha hurries to the office and communicates with Joanne using the radio. After several attempts, she manages to establish contact and relays the distressing news that she witnessed Bill with blood-stained hands. Concerned, Joanne advises Samantha to stay with the children and assures her that she is on her way. Upon reaching the school, Joanne discovers Bill standing near the basketball court, his face covered with a reddish-brown substance and looking out of it. Joanne attempts to communicate with Bill to try and find out what happened, but she is unable to understand what he is saying. As Samantha rushes towards them, Joanne instructs her to wait outside while she investigates the bathroom. Inside, Joanne sees blood pooling on the floor and feels fear gripping her as she enters one of the stalls. As soon as she sees what is on the other side, Joanne recoils in horror at the gruesome scene. Going outside, Joanne draws her gun and points it at Bill, placing him under arrest for the disturbing crime he had committed. Meanwhile, Samantha goes inside the bathroom to see what Bill has done and almost passes out from revision after seeing Bill's brutally murdered daughter. Hearing voices coming adjacent stall, Samantha opens the door and finds a frightened young boy hiding inside. Shielding his eyes from the distressing scene, she leads him outside. Once Joanne manages to secure Bill in her car, Samantha, still shaking from the shock, asks her sister why he would do this to his daughter. Joanne, unable to provide a satisfactory answer, advises Samantha to gather all the children and come to the police station. Meanwhile, in town, Luke becomes suspicious of Anthony's aimless wandering and decides to follow him. Despite Luke's attempts to engage him in conversation, Anthony remains silent, barely acknowledging Luke's presence before continuing on his way. Standing there, Luke catches the faint voices of the teenagers hidden on the balcony above, making him look up. The group explains to Luke that they had been hiding, waiting for someone to rescue them from the motionless strangers standing around the building. When they tell him they are unable to leave because the doors are locked, Luke pulls out his gun and enters the building, checking the surroundings only to be surprised when he discovers Marsha in hiding. Marsha tearfully tells him that she hid there after Anthony attacked her, forcing her to flee for her life. Assuring her that everything will be all right, Luke attempts to guide her to safety, but is caught off guard when Anthony launches a sudden assault on him. Flug aside by Anthony, Luke witnesses the disturbing transformation of Anthony's face, marked by weird veins. Anthony then lunges at Marsha, seizing her by the head and violently slamming her into the wall. Attempting to help her, Luke fires a shot, hitting Anthony in the leg, causing him to scream out in pain and flee. When he follows Anthony, Luke unexpectedly encounters Dean, another resident who appears to be exhibiting similar symptoms. Suddenly, Dean starts running, prompting Luke to chase after him but is unable to keep up. Dean eventually reaches his own house and begins to attack his wife, grabbing her throat and snapping her neck. Just in the nick of time, Joanne arrives at Dean's house and sees the grim sight of the dead woman. After regrouping with Luke, the two officers run in to encounter Dean, who is now holding his infant child. Attempting to calm the crazed man down, Joanne tries to check on the baby's well-being, but Dean attacks her, leaving Luke with no choice but to fire at him. As the man collapses to the ground, they catch a quick glimpse of a giant, monstrous creature vanishing into the earth. Their shock is cut short when the zombified individuals suddenly begin to chase them. The two officers scramble to their car and rush back to the station. When they arrive, they quickly contact a doctor, requesting an investigation into Bill's condition. After a brief examination, the doctor informs Joanne that the strange sickness is unlike anything he has ever seen, leaving them confused. Once the doctor leaves, Joanne cautiously speaks to Bill, who seems to be regaining his senses. Encouraged, she gently asks him about what happened that morning, tears streaming down his face Bill confesses that the voices in his head forced him to commit a horrible crime. Despite being aware of his actions, he reveals his inability to control himself, begging to kill him. Suddenly, Bill's face undergoes a chilling transformation as a different voice is heard coming out of him declaring it had quickly ended the girl's life by snapping her neck. 
Frightened by the strange incidents, Joanne asks Luke to gather all uninfected individuals and relocate them to the station. After heading back to the office, Joanne and Luke receive a call from Angela, who informs them of her intention to leave town and tells them she was noticing a massive storm. Although she tries to go through it, she finds it too difficult and contacts the officer, telling them it is impossible to go through. Concerned about their friend, Joanne drives to the outskirts of town to retrieve Angela and brings her back to town. Meanwhile, at the school, Samantha is overwhelmed by the presence of strangers staring at them and decides to take Joanne's advice and head to the station. As they rush to the car, the group is surprised by the horrifying sight of an otherworldly creature attacking and dragging unsuspecting individuals into the ground. Once the immediate danger is over, Samantha drives the group to the station, where some had arrived to seek refuge, while the rest of the community remain locked inside their homes. As night falls, Joanne, followed by a young man hiding within the station, heads out to rescue any survivors in town. In the meantime, Luke and Samantha stand guard, attempting to guard the station and its inhabitants. While bringing back the people they had found, Joanna and the others find themselves pursued by hordes of infected individuals, barely escaping as they jump into the station. While looking out the building window, they hear an ear-piercing scream that reverberates through the air. When they follow the frightening sound, it reveals a large creature picking out the infected individuals one by one. Curious, Luke and Joanne venture outside, coming face to face with the monster as it drags Bill's lifeless body from the rooftop of the nearby holding cell, vanishing into the depths of the earth. After the attack, the group realizes that one of the young girls is missing and goes out to look for her. After searching the area, they are shocked when they see Michelle being attacked by her infected mother. While attempting to help the girl, the group is surprised by the sudden arrival of the alien creature. While still holding Michelle's leg, her mother is dragged by the alien, pulling Michelle with her. Desperate to save the girl, Joanne fires her gun and shouts, attempting to get the creature's attention. Grabbing a shovel, she hits the infected woman's hand, freeing Michelle and allowing the creature to drag the lifeless body away. The alien creature carries the infected corpses into the desert, where they are consumed by flames, eradicating the disease and causing the oppressive wall of dust surrounding the town to disappear. The following morning, the survivors are still shocked by the horrors they witnessed, struggling to come to terms with reality. While Luke and Joanne are sitting together in front of the police station, Luke reveals his intention to leave the town, while Joanne expresses her interest in staying. As the movie ends, Joanne watches over her sleeping nephew, her gaze lingering on the drawing he had created of the alien creature. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.